what is the relationship between logic and reality? Does logic represent or describe reality? This is a question that Olga Cooperman asked me over on Ko-Fi. They ask, my question is, does logic represent the structure of reality? If you'd like me to do a video answering your question, go and take a look at my Ko-Fi page, but we're going to get on with answering Olga's question right now. Okay, so does logic represent the structure of reality? What exactly might that mean? Well, here's one thing it could mean. We can look at the idea of logical atomism. So this is an idea that comes from the philosophers Bertrand Russell and Ludwig Wittgenstein. In the early parts of the 20th century, you can see these ideas in Russell's The Philosophy of Logical Atomism, but also in Wittgenstein's first book, The Tractatus Logico Philosophicus. This is the really, really difficult work of philosophy that he wrote whilst he was a prisoner of war. He was in prisoner of war camp during the First World War. So what is the idea of logical atomism? Well, basically, it's the idea that we can understand the structure of the world in analogy to the structure of logic. So let me give you a little bit of background to this idea just so we can understand what it was responding to. Late in the 19th century, in the early 20th century, idealism, British idealism, but influenced by German idealism, was kind of the dominant philosophy. And one of the things it held was an idea of holism or monism, the idea that the world can only be understood as a whole. You can't really understand the parts of the world unless you understand the world as a whole. Russell and Wittgenstein were reacting to that. They're saying, look, we can break the world down logically through logical analysis into its constituent parts and understand those. So what's this got to do with logic? Well, here's the idea, right? In logic, in, say, propositional logic, we build up sentences from atoms, the P's, Q's and R's. OK, we build up sentences from these using the connectives and or not if then, if and only if. So given any logical sentence, however complex it might be, we can always break it down to its atoms. And given the way that they are combined using and, or, not, if, then, etc., we can understand what the whole sentence means in terms of that combination of the atoms. Russell's and Wittgenstein's idea was basically that we can understand the world in kind of the same way or, or an analogous way, okay? Through logical analysis, we can break down the facts in the world, which are kind of ultimately going to be like logical sentences. We can analyze them into their constituent parts, the atoms, the logical atoms, and through understanding those, we can understand the whole. So there's some really nice ideas in there. The idea that we can understand the world, like in its parts, without first understanding the whole. You know, that idealist notion, I think it's very difficult because we're never going to understand the world in its entirety, in its whole. But we do want to try to understand the parts of it. So I think that's a, a real good point of this theory. But for me, you know, it's not really going to work because when we break down a logical sentence into its atoms, they might be things like, you know, it's raining right now. OK, logically simple, but not really metaphysically basic. OK, we won't want to say that it's raining. That's a metaphysically basic fact, a, a metaphysical atom, because it depends on loads of other stuff, right? In order for it to be a fact that it's raining right now, we need the existence of water and all the chemistry that that's based on. We need weather systems and clouds. You know, if there was water falling from the sky, that doesn't make it rain. It has to be part of a weather system coming out of the clouds, etc., etc. So there's a lot more going on to understanding what is the metaphysical building blocks of reality than just logical analysis. And, you know, if you're asking for my view, I would say that we want to understand the metaphysical building blocks, both through doing metaphysics and also by looking at what fundamental science says. So in some ways, logic doesn't have that much to do with that, other than in the kind of obvious sense of checking whether we've got good, logically coherent arguments or not. OK, so I'm not going to say that logic represents the structure of reality in the same way that logical atomists would have said. But there's another way that you might think that logic represents the structure of reality. You might think it represents something like 
the way that truth works in reality. Now, this is a kind of a tricky issue because logic isn't just representing the way that truth works. It's not just that in a logical argument, if the premises are true, the conclusions are true. There's a kind of necessity in there, right? If the premises are true, then it must be that the conclusion's true. Or kind of more precisely, necessarily, if the premises, then the conclusion. So there's a kind of necessity that's baked into logic. Where does that come from? Is it found in reality itself? Well, I mean, kind of depends what you mean by reality. We certainly don't find it in the physical spatio-temporal world. Really, where that necessity comes from, that logical necessity, you might think it's got a lot more to do with the concepts of and and or and if then and if and only if and not. OK, so what those concepts mean or what their nature is, that's got an awful lot to do with where the necessity baked into logic comes from. OK, so if you think of concepts as part of the world, then, yeah, in that sense, logic represents bits of the world. But it's not really representing the structure of the world as a whole. It's got a lot more to do with representing our logical concepts. So I think I want to conclude that, yeah, really, logic doesn't represent the structure of the world, the metaphysical structure of the world, or the physical structure of the world, it's got a lot more to do with representing the structure, the normative structure of our concepts, and particularly of the concepts of those logical terms, you know, and or not, and so on. Having said that, it doesn't mean that logic's got nothing to do with the world, right? Because after all, logic tells us that if this stuff about the world is true, then this stuff about the world is true. OK, so logic extends our knowledge of the world. It helps our theorising about the world. But I'm going to say it doesn't directly represent the structure in the world. If you want to go a little bit deeper into the way that logical structure works in a logical language, go and take a look at this video up here. Thank you so much, Olga, for asking your question. I hope I've answered it at least a little bit. Thank you so much to all my Ko-Fi supporters for making this content possible. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you back here soon.